Hi, and welcome to this video on the close approach of the star Gliese 710 to the solar system. Gliese 710 is an insignificant orange star. Compared to our sun, it's smaller, less massive, and significantly cooler. Its smaller size and cooler temperature means it only has 4.5% of the luminosity of the sun. Lying at a distance of 62.25 light years means that it's too faint to be seen with the naked eye. But the one thing that makes Gliese 710 stand out is it's been known for over 30 years that in the future it's going to pass very close to our solar system. It wasn't until the launch of the Gaia mission in 2013 that we knew how close it's going to get. The measurements taken by Gaia can be divided into three strands. Astrometry is measuring the position of stars, but also comets, asteroids, quasars. Changes in the position of a star over a year give it star distance. We can also measure the proper motion. This is the gradual motion of stars with respect to more distant background objects. And the wobble in a star's position can give an indication that the star has exoplanets. Photometry, this is measuring the brightness of objects. And spectrometry, measuring the blue or red shifts of spectral lines. This will determine if the star is moving towards or away from us. Consider the motion of a star. We can think about its velocity as having two components. The radial velocity, which is the movement away or towards from us, can easily be measured as the red shift or blue shift of spectral lines. But the transverse velocity, which is the velocity at right angles to us, is harder to measure. The proper motion is determined by recording the change in position of a star over time, as expressed as a change in angle per year. Because the stars are so far away from us, the proper motion is quite small, even for nearby stars, which have the largest proper motion, it's expressed in arc seconds per year, an arc second being one three thousand six hundredth of a degree. Once the distance of the star is known, the transverse velocity, which is the proper motion times the distance, can be estimated. And I've put a worked example here. If we look at the measurements for Gliese 710, we see that it has a radial velocity of minus 14.5 kilometers a second. Um, this negative sign indicates that Gliese 710 is moving towards us. The proper motion is very small, 0.429 milliarc seconds a year, and this gives us a very small transverse velocity of only 0.039 kilometers a second. So taking these two factors into account, it tells us this faint, unremarkable star is heading towards us. And at some point in the future, it's gonna get very close to us indeed. I've put a link to a recent paper here. Based on the Gaia data, in 1.28 million years time, Gliese 710, has a 99% probability of getting between 0.147 and 0.189 light years of the sun. That's pretty close. No star is predicted to get as close to the solar system in the future. And as far as we know, no star has passed as close to the sun in at least the past few million years. 
So in stellar terms, this is pretty close. It's 25 times closer than the current closest star, Proxima Centauri, and well within the Oort cloud of icy bodies that surrounds the solar system. Well, one question we can ask is how Gliese 710 will appear to observers when it gets so close to the solar system. But before we ask that question, it's legitimate to ask, will humanity even be around in 1.2 million years time? Will we, will we be extinct as a species? Well, assuming we are around, will our descendants be living on Earth or will they be living on other planets in space colonies? Will the night sky be covered in bright satellites? So even if Gliese 710 is incredibly bright, it will be barely noticeable. Or will civilization have collapsed? Will humanity have gone back to the Stone Age? Well, assuming we are around to see Gliese 710 in 1.8, 1.28 million years time, well, it's going to be very bright. It's going to be five times brighter than Sirius, the current brightest star. And it's going to be relatively big, at least for a star. Virtually all stars are just points of light, with the, um, even with the largest telescope. But Gliese 17 will be as large as the planet Pluto and could be, in theory, resolved by a 1.3 metre telescope if atmospheric conditions were perfect. The other thing is that um, its proper motion, that's its mo movement with respect to the background stars, were extraordinarily rapid. Over a period of 80 years, it will actually move roughly three times the diameter of the moon with respect to the background stars. One question to ask is, will the Sun and Gliese 710 become a double star when they get so close to each other? And the answer to that question is no, because they're not gravitationally bound to each other. They will get very close and then the distance between them will increase. The solar system is surrounded by a vast cloud of bodies known as the Oort cloud, which can do, be divided into two. There's a spherical outer Oort cloud, which contains about a trillion objects larger than a kilometre, loosely bound to the sun, total mass about five times the Earth. And there's a denser dish shape inner or, or cloud. And although Gliese 710 is less massive than the sun, it's still considerably massive, 600 times the mass of Jupiter, 190,000 times the mass of the Earth. And as this plows through the Oort cloud, at 52,000 kilometers an hour, it's going to have quite a significant impact. In fact, the close approach of Gliese 710 will be the strongest disrupting encounter in the future and the known history of the solar system. The disruption of the Oort cloud will create comet swarms a recent paper suggested 30 million new comets, but um, what we don't know is how many of these new comets will be short period comets which could come close to Earth. And the effect on the Gliese 710 Oort cloud, assuming it exists at all, is unknown. So while articles such as this one in Newsweek might make interesting reading. We can't say whether this is likely to happen in 1.3 million years time. We don't know. My guess is there will be some impact on Earth. There will be more comets, but whether we'll have a extinction event like the one which wiped out the dinosaurs, we can't say. <laughs>